Why is communication with a narcissist so difficult? When it comes to narcissistic people, most of them feel entitled to always be right. In which case, they always have to make everybody else out to be wrong if another person's opinion doesn't match the narcissist. If another person's reality doesn't match the narcissist, a narcissist will go all out to invalidate, to shame, to humiliate, to blame, to criticise, to judge the other person so that the narcissist can feel as though they are in the right and make out all others are in the wrong. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support with the channel is muchly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about the narcissist personality disorder to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with in your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you overcome narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel please do subscribe so this video is about narcissistic people are lacking in critical thinking skills which makes it incredibly difficult to communicate with them when it comes to communication with a narcissist be it your parents partner siblings boss friends co-workers or trying to co-parent with one fear and panic can hit and they can hit hard learning how to stand up for yourself and speaking your mind to them to be yourself around them when you do try to get your point of view across and force your boundaries it can be one of the most emotionally draining hurtful confusing frustrating annoying and at times scary experiences conversations with a narcissist at times are impossible you can communicate with them all we have to do is open our mouths and talk that's communication yet having a conversation with them about something they promised to do that they didn't do or something they have done calling them out on their shady behavior finding a compromise finding the middle ground trying to work through issues together is virtually impossible one of the best methods to recover from this kind of emotional abuse is no contact. In some cases, this isn't always possible. And in some cases, they are on the lower end of the spectrum. These are when it's best to learn how they work and how to handle yourself around them. So you aren't the one left feeling angry, hurt, frustrated, confused and annoyed. When you feel yourself going, it's always best to retreat, rethink and then only respond if you need to do so, such as for court orders. A conversation with a narcissist is crazy making. They will provoke you to get reactions from you so they can blame everything on you. They will switch the topic of conversation, talk over you, play the victim, gaslight you, guilt trip you, triangulate you, fall silent on you, rage at you especially when they don't get what they want or what they believe they're entitled to. This could be learned behaviour from their childhood or it could simply be they do not understand why we don't see it their way and even when we do see it their way we don't always agree with them and they don't understand why we don't agree with them. Just like we don't understand to begin with how they don't understand us yet we're capable of learning as they don't sometimes understand a simple conversation, they can take things as criticism if it doesn't match exactly what they think, provoking their defence mechanisms and creating rage and anger within them. Even though that's not our intention or when you just want them to say sorry for something they did, give you closure, that they, they are unwilling and they are unable now, some are highly toxic and dangerous. These are more than narcissistic sociopath or narcissistic psychopath. Only you know the kind of narcissist you're dealing with. But the more you stand your ground with them, the more all hell seems to break loose. You are left constantly on the lookout for their next game. So here's a little more information on why a narcissist cannot see your point of view and always seems to work against you as it's always their way or you will suffer way. 
She doesn't have to be that way. You can lead them to think something was their idea, true to narcissistic form. If they believe it's their idea, they will go with it. They will run with it. If they believe they're in control, they have the upper hand, most will go for it. Yes, this seems like manipulation. So long as you're doing it with good intentions so that your relationship works better with your parents, your boss, your children's other parent. So long as it's not out of spite to cause hurt or pain, you're doing it to see healthier results all round, not to be hurtful. Research shows that narcissists are less likely to use critical thinking and are lacking in cognitive reflection skills. This is good news for those of you that question, am I a narcissist? Which most of us do when we first learn about the disorder. Another reason you're not, when you overthink and over-reflect and question so much from your past, also another reason why narcissists act on impulse and can simply walk away, taking everything with them without a glance back. Grandiose and vulnerable narcissists differ in their cognitive reflection skills. The grandiose narcissist is the type most people think about when they heard the word narcissist. That arrogance, that sense of superiority, their entitlement, and they come across as having very high self-esteem, very confident, which is their arrogance, uh, extroverted to the outside world. Whereas the fragile or the vulnerable, the covert narcissist can come across as insecure to those closest to them. They are more defensive and more reactive, often yet not always more introverted. Most narcissists do act on impulse and are unable to reflect on what they did wrong, while others are more calculated and once they've made a choice are less able to reflect on that choice. Both the grandiose and the vulnerable narcissist are self-centred. They can be highly impulsive, even if they don't act on impulse all the time. Once they've made their mind up, once they've made a decision, once they've made a choice, they stick with it. They don't have the ability to reflect correctly, to see it from another person's viewpoint. They're lacking the empathy to see it from how another might see it or to change their mind. Once they've set a plan into action, they just roll with it and stick to their truths, their false reality. A vulnerable narcissist is most likely to reflect temporarily but only in a process which is namely me, myself and I and everybody else is to blame for everything that's gone wrong in their life and not usually for the benefit of others or for learning from their own mistakes. Most narcissists seem to lack the ability to make a choice based on critical thinking skills. Even when they are wrong, lacking in cognitive reflection means they are not as able as those not on the spectrum to reflect on their choices that they have made adequately. The narcissist personality disorder is on a spectrum, hence there are those that might be able to, yet that's often rarely to never. They often revert back to their original way of thinking when their needs are met, often why you get the false apology. That's usually blamed on something you did or something someone else did. It's always that I'm sorry you, I'm sorry if, I'm sorry but, as they try to rationalise their behaviour away with excuses by placing the blame at someone else's door. Once their minds are made up, once their needs have been met, they revert back to their negative ways. Narcissists are far less likely to use critical thinking, which is important to make good, sound decisions in life and the ability to solve problems. Cognitive reflection is a person having the ability to reflect on something they might have done wrong, mistakes they might have made. However, narcissists don't reflect. Instead, they override any thought that they could, in fact, be in the wrong as they cannot reflect on their own actions. If others perceive them as in the wrong, that's the other person's fault and not theirs. They will cling on to the fact that they are right as they are unable to reflect and find ways of making their actions or behaviour correct. They will find ways to rationalise 
their behavior, to justify their behavior. And no matter how many times or how many different ways you try to explain to them how they hurt you, they just see this as criticism and they seek to punish you. They seek to shame you. They seek to blame you. Which is why no one can throw a bigger tantrum than a narcissist being shown facts and evidence of something they definitely did do. Yet they don't want others to think they are wrong. The whole, that didn't happen, and if it did, it wasn't my fault, and if it was, then you made me do it. Critical thinking is having the ability to analyse facts, to form a judgement, the ability to think clearly and rationally. Then understand the logic between the ideas or the actions, the ability to engage and reflect. No one thinks critically all of the time, especially when our self-control is affected by anger, by pain, by resentment, by grief or by joy. We are all capable of being single-minded, which even those of us who are not narcissistic can slip into various situations. However, a narcissist rarely uses that critical thinking for the good of others, only temporarily to serve themselves. This is why when you're trying to reach a compromise with them over something, they cannot see it from your point of view. And even if they can, they lack the empathy to care for how you feel. They can only see it from their own. You might as well go blue in the face discussing things that matter to you with them. You'd get better results from talking to a brick wall as your thoughts, feelings or opinions will be invalidated by a narcissist if they are not the exact same as the narcissist. They are not listening to you. They are listening at what they can use against you to get you going to provoke you so that they can blame you and they can feel like they're right and you're wrong. The more you push a subject with a narcissist, the more anger they feel that you don't see it from their way. The more they act on impulse to cut you down and this is why you're not going to win with a narcissist, the fact that you have empathy, the fact that you care, means that you're most likely to step down, to fawn to their behaviour, to try and create peace, whereas a narcissist is looking for drama. When narcissists are shown facts and evidence, they struggle to use critical thinking skills. Instead, they go for gut instincts resulting in impulsive behaviours. Now, we all have to listen to our instincts. However, many of us like to think them over and communicate with other people to see what's happening. A narcissist uses this communication so that we doubt our gut instincts and do as they please. With a narcissist, they don't often think. They act first and then think of how they can get away with it afterwards. The grandiose side of their personality disorder overrides their ability to critically analyse facts. So with some, it could simply be they are genuinely incapable of listening to what you are trying to say. They are merely stuck within their own mindset without the ability to think differently. If you can go no contact which I always advise is best, as their thinking skills mix with their lack of empathy and lack of remorse, it makes for some of the most hurtful, toxic and dangerous people there are. So with most, it truly needs to be no contact. Yet there are those on the lower end of the spectrum or if you cannot go no contact, here's a few ways to deal with them in a conversation. Always look calm and collected. Looking just over their shoulder, try not to make direct eye contact when they come at you with their word salad. Just look at their left ear. So it looks like you're making eye contact, although you're not making eye contact. If it's face to face and you feel a need to respond, do not react to the vile things that they are saying to provoke you. They are saying these things to get a reaction from you. That is what they want. That's why they are doing it. Remember who they are. Observe their behaviour. Knowing they are only saying things to provoke you, passing their own insecurities off onto you. Do not absorb the words. Don't take them personally. Don't defend yourself. That's what they want and why they are doing it. Instead, say things like, 
you seem upset all the time. Are you okay? Or you seem negative. Is everything okay? And leave them to it. Don't continue a conversation. Just hit repeat of what you said as they will try to twist it and turn it on to you. They will try to take you off topic. If you repeat the same thing, you'll watch them get more frustrated that they cannot draw the reactions that they want from you. So always keep yourself safe. Shut them down by not reacting to what they are saying. If it's a message, don't go off topic. Do not respond to whatever they're throwing at you. Say what needs to be said once and then leave them to it. So if it's to do with children, things like kids have something on, they'll be ready at six. And when they come at you with, that's just like you, you're so selfish, you're so awkward. You've said all that needed to be said. You don't need to keep explaining or justifying yourself to them. They didn't listen the first time. They're not going to listen the second. They feel criticism that you haven't done exactly what they wanted to do. They're not interested in why, they're interested in getting you back. Or when they bring children home late or pick the children up late, because they are the self-entitled hypocrite, they are continually allowed to be late for you. They are continually allowed to let their own children down, but you are not allowed to be late for them. So when they do these games, act like it's not bothered you leave them to it. That's their life. You know that you can expect that they are going to bring those children home late because it's their pattern of behaviour. So expect the children to be late and you'll not be disappointed when they don't arrive home on time. Other phrases are, why would you think that? Or you're entitled to your opinion of me and I'm entitled to have my own. When you do say these things, make sure your face stays straight and you keep emotions hidden. Always look calm and collected. When they are not getting what they want from you, narcissists can get angry and they make themselves better by making you feel bad. So always be careful. When they're coming at you claiming that you're awkward, you're selfish, you're crazy, you're insecure, just tell them that that's possible. We don't have to go into any detail. We just have to say that's possible. And the more they chip away, you just say that's possible because more often than not, you are feeling like you're going crazy because they are provoking those feelings within you. You are feeling sensitive because you are around a highly insensitive person. At the start, you may need to get your reactions and emotions out. Just do not do it in front of a narcissist. Once you learn who they are, once you learn their behaviour, you'll know their games and it'll no longer affect you. It takes time, it takes practice, we make mistakes. Failure is just our first attempt in learning. We have to learn our boundaries. No contact is the best. If it's not possible, then it's grey rock and limited contact. You are worth so much more. You will recover and move forward to a much happier life. I shall add into the description the video on cognitive empathy. If anyone has any thoughts on this video, please add those into the comments. Go out there, create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. If you are looking for further support, I have partnered with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is in the description if you'd like to take a look at that. Thank you for listening. 